evening, YouTube model railroader fans. I'm Ray. Welcome to the Beauville Newtown vlog number 17 for 2016. I know it's been a while. I've been a bit busy. Um, I actually, <laughs> I actually just got back from va vacation number two. Um, the first vacation we had, uh, we had family in from overseas, and uh, we did some things with them. We went down to Ocean City, Maryland, in the middle of July. Uh, they left the end of July, and then this past week, uh, the 5th through the, well, actually it was, yeah, the 5th through the 12th, which is the day, um, we were up in, uh, actually we came home last night, we were up in Cooperstown, New York, um, for my nephew's uh, baseball team. Uh, he was up in Cooperstown, um, playing in the uh, Little League uh, baseball tournament up there. They didn't do too bad, uh, you know. They went five and one leading into the tournament, and then they went one and one in the tournament. And since it's single elimination, they they were done. So uh, we actually, like I said, came home last night. Took the wonderful seven-hour drive back home in the thunderstorms <laughs> between New York and Pennsylvania. So um, I do have uh, that's off topic, but it was on topic because while we were up in Cooperstown, New York. Um, there is a railroad up there called the Cooperstown and Charlotte Valley. Uh, we actually took the train ride. It's actually a three-hour. It was actually a three-hour train ride um, from Milford, New York, into Cooperstown and back. Um, the neat thing of it was is it was Rail Fan Day. Uh, they actually had both of their trains running. Um, I've got some pictures which I'm going to post towards the end of this video. Um, and also, I took a video of the uh, Jordan spreader that they have uh, that was actually mounted to, or not mounted to, but was on the point of another train that actually met up with our passenger train and actually passed by us. Um, they were doing some runarounds and some things of that nature and doing all sorts of photo shoots, and they would stop every so often, and the rail fans would hop off and take pictures and then hop back on, and I didn't get a chance to do all of that stuff. It was a little bit warm, and... I just decided, you know what, I'm going to hang back and I'll just take pictures from the train. So that's what I did, but got some neat pictures. Uh, met up with a fellow by the name of Brian. I didn't catch his last name. He's just starting off. In, he's a sem he's semi-retired, and he's actually um, starting an N-Gage layout. So I told him about our little group um, to which he was going to look into. I haven't seen anything from him on Facebook, and to be honest, I really haven't had a chance to take a look at my YouTube page to see if he's hit me up yet there either. So, here's thinking about you, Brian. Uh, hopefully the rest of your trip was good, and hopefully we'll catch up with you sometime in the future. Um, any rate, one of the other unique things that happened while we were up there is uh, the cab that we were staying at, we, we had very limited Wi-Fi, and they actually call it MiFi. It was a, uh, they, they take cell signal and convert it from cellular to Wi-Fi so that you can actually get onto the internet. And the, one of their stipulations was is they didn't want you on there all the time, so I only got in every so often. As it was, um, somebody uh, on, uh, the, I think it was the HSCL Buy, Sell, Trade, actually had something up for sale that I've been looking for for a while. It happens to be a Proto 2000 E7. Now I haven't had this thing. I took it out of the box to take a look at it. Um, I haven't run it yet. We're going to get ready to do that here in a little bit, but there we are. I got my E7 for the Wabash Railroad to go ahead and pull my Wabash ca passenger cars, which are floating around here someplace. <laughs> I'm not sure where they are, but I'll find them, and this is what's going to pull those passenger cars. So, I finally have my passenger, my Wabash locomotive to pull my passenger cars that I bought almost a year ago. <laughs> Had the cars, no locomotive. So, I know I'm rambling here, I know I'm going a little bit quick, but I've got quite a bit of stuff to cover, I'm trying to keep that 15 minute... Although I doubt that I'll ever actually hit that, but we'll see what happens. Um, but like I said, it was that was that was a unique trip. Um, we got to see quite a see some of the area up there. Went to the museum and things of that nature. But um, one of the pictures that I'm going to post up in a little bit that came from the Charlotte Valley and or the Cooperstown and Charlotte Valley. Um, they just got in a uh, F. 
what was it, an FL7 or an FL9? Um, I've seen them, I've heard of them. I've never actually seen one up close, and I've actually got a picture of it. It actually came from uh, Metra, I think it was. Um, they're gonna, they were actually working on it while we were up there. Uh, they had it at, out of the engine shop, and they had it fired up, and, and it, it sounded a little rough, but the, the thing that got me with the, I, like I said, I think it's an FL9, the thing that got me was the real wheel arrangement. You know, it's four axle in the front and three axle, four axle, yeah. just trying it again right. Two axles in the front, three axles in the rear. So it's it's it looks like an F unit, but it's not. <laughs> so it was a very unique looking locomotive, and the locomotives that were actually pulling our train um, were SWs or S units. Um, so that was neat. Um, and of course, you know, here it is. We're trucking along. We I think we had four or five passenger or four four cars, and then we had an open car that was a converted gondola. Um, that they were using that's an open car that they actually use for uh, the blues band that they actually they have a blues train uh, that they have every once in a while um, but uh, they were at the, you know we're going really slow and of course my wife's like well, how come we're going so slow I thought that I'm like kind of I said they're pulling they're being pulled by an old SW look I said they didn't move fast I said they were designed for power not for speed <laughs> so, and it, it, like I said, the whole train ride out and back took us <laughs> took us three hours. So, but it was cool. It was a lot of fun. It was a blast. So, you know what? I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop the video for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, E7 on the line, and let's see what happens. So, give me a minute. And we'll be right back. Well, there it is, and there it sits. Uh, this bridge is going to drive me nuts. Okay, what it was is the bridge, I had an issue with the bridge. The bridge actually came apart before, and when I went to fix it, apparently the railroad spike that was holding it down, um, apparently was still sticking up. So I had to put that back in place. I wanted to show you this picture. Watch this. This thing has actually got a Mars light, and it doesn't show up really all that well. But it, the light is actually flashing on the front of the locomotive. The upper, the upper light. Let's see if we get a clean pass this time. There we go. I think I may have to give it a little bit more power for you to be able to see that light. Let's see what happens when it comes out of the tunnel this time. The first locomotive that I've actually got that's got one of these, I, I just found it to be a little unique, that's all. Of course, one of the other things you'll notice here is the fact that, well, now it's going a little bit too fast. But I'm not going to be able to run all four cars on this thing as it sits. Because it'll never make it underneath the, uh, underneath a Waker Hill here. Or it would, but nothing would be able to get past it. So, I'm pleased. <laughs> to say the least. So I think we're going to stop this here for a minute and I'll be right back. Well, so far so good. I'm keeping this thing close to where I want it. Um, <clears throat> Time-wise, anyways. Um, I brought this back over to the bench because there's a couple things that I wanted to look at. <sighs> um, there's some actual... That, that with the, that ki with the uh, box, there was actually some um, detail parts. And I wanted to see what those detail parts are for. There's also another front uh, pilot for it. There's another gas tank. So I want to see how all that works. And I also just want to go over this thing real quick and make sure that it's... I mean, it sounded pretty good. I mean, it's, 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 it's heavier than heck <laughs> for what it is. But, um, pardon me. 
anywho, so that's been um, my life here in the last uh, for the last month or so. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a look at these detail parts and uh, see what they encompass and see what they're for and. Maybe I'll do a video on how I take those detail parts and put them on this thing, but I'm I'm impressed. So it's an old Proto 2000. Um, looks like it's been out of the box. May have been run. I'm not sure. That's the first time I've run it. Actually, it does look pretty clean, so it may have been the first time it's been run. But that's a that's a beautiful piece, and I I, I feel rather good about what I paid for it as well. So. Thumbs up. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Um, the neat thing of it is, too, I'm going to open this back up real quick. So we're going to do this like uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Glass and make this sort of a, uh, a review as well. Um, obviously, for those DC Sears out there, um, you do have a board back here that can be Obviously, I, I think that this here just comes out and you just replace it with a DCC board if you want. Like I said, this does have a Mars light on the front, so the light, you know, pulsates, which is unique. That's the first time I've actually seen one like that. Um, I shouldn't say I've seen. I've seen other people have them. This is the first one that I've got like that. Um, but, I mean, here it is. You got the your engineer and conductor up front and... Uh, like I said, this thing is heavier than heck. Of course, we all know that, or at least as far as I'm concerned, at one point in time, Lifelike, I think, started taking a, uh, uh, started taking some cues from uh, the old Atherin Blue Box, and that's kind of the motor setup that I think is in here. I mean, I can't really tell because it's <laughs> pretty much covered with whatever this is. I don't know if this is plastic. No, that's all metal. That is all metal, folks. Um, this thing is going to be a butte, Clark, when I go to start, uh, when I have to go in there and do any type of, um, you know, greasing and oiling, but, uh, that's, that's fine. And like I said, it does have, it's got an extended, this here is the short gas tank. It's actually got a longer gas tank. I don't know how this comes off of here. I guess it just slides or snaps or something, but I'll figure that out. Um, detailing wise, it's a lifelike. It's a Proto 2000. I mean, you've got the, the, the grill screens are in there. I don't know if you can, I mean, you can see, I mean, you can't see through them, but you can see that there's a grill screen across there. You got the screens across the top. Um, there's actually, there's actually glass or plastic in these windows here. Um, of course, you got the molded in grab irons um, for the most part. And um, actually, on the front here, they're not molded on. They're actually they're actually separated. Um, of course, you got your horns on top, and so on and so forth. And this, the uh, the bellows in the back, it that actually functions. Um, and I think there's actually a set of MU hoses for multiple units and things of that nature. So I'm gonna have to take a look at the detail parts and figure out how that all works and figure out how it goes together. And we'll do that in another video. And maybe I'll dig a little bit deeper into this, and we'll go from there. But you know, like I said, I picked this up off of a fella uh, from uh, the uh, HO Scale Buy Sell Trade um, on Facebook. Very nice fella, uh, considering the fact, like I said, that uh, I um, didn't, I, I, I had very limited access where I was, and I explained that to him. I'm like, look, you know, I'm very interested, but. Um, my internet access up here, or where I'm at, is uh, rather <laughs> rather spotty at best. So, um, but, uh, and it also came, that was the other neat thing. It came with a uh, horn hook and the Katie's in the box, or whatever, whatever it was. The other odd thing is, the actual coupler pocket itself moves back and forth, so you can use it on a tighter radius, radius if you had to. I could probably run this on the 18 if I wanted to. There's no point because it's a passenger. It's supposed to be a passenger locomotive. The passenger trains right now are running on the 22. Um, speaking of which, um, slight change in plan. Um, I know we. I kind of talked about what my thought was for doing, rebuilding this thing. That's going to stick. Um, however, thinking about things a little bit, and the fact that I like to come down here and just goof off like I just did, 
Um, what I'm actually thinking about doing is keeping the existing layout up. This is going to sound really, really strange, but that's just who I am. Keeping the existing layout up, but actually start building my sections across the walls and actually have this thing tie into that so it kind of extends it. So in other words, the, the swing bridge would come out and I'd actually just run right off of it onto the extensions. Um, and then once I get to a point where this thing gets in the way, then I'll actually break it down and move it and be able to build the rest of what I want. The way I've got it set up on that plan, which we discussed in, I think, vlog 15 and 16, you know, the existing town of Beauville, Beauville will just get turned around and pushed up against the wall. Um, new town gets broken up. That there will become two other pieces for other sections on here. Um, new Bullshide becomes New Town. Uh, Wakerd Hill, its pieces will be busted up and used for other things. Um, so, with that being said, theoretically, I can keep if I can build these other sections around the room till I need till I need the parts that are a part of the layout now. Then I can just you know keep this thing going and just have it go point to point for a while or if I want to come down here and run the trains as I just did I could just throw the swing bridge back into place and voila we're back to running around in circles so that's the idea I don't know how well it's going to work I don't know when I'm actually going to get started on that but when I do you'll you'll kind of get an idea as to what I'm looking at but that's down the road. It's not going to happen tomorrow type of deal. It's probably going to be another, <laughs> with the way my luck's been going, it'll probably be another year and a half or so before I'm actually ready to start tearing into this thing. Um, you know, I do have some stuff floating around down here. I could, theoretically, I could start building some of the sections now, but it, it, I, I don't have the track yet. I don't have, you know, all that stuff. So I, I've got to start looking around and seeing what's out there and, work on that so with that being said i'm going to sign off but i'm going to go ahead and throw up some pictures on that video that i took from cooperstown you all know the deal you wait for the highball green tracks ahead we'll catch you all next time have a good one be safe out there see ya